Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. After the craziness of yesterday, you'd think that all the steam of Kaladesh is finally done. Yeah, you'd be super wrong about that. In today's video, we're looking at some crazy cheap constructs, a new Planeswalker card, and a bunch more. This is going to be good. If you enjoy our preview videos, make sure to hit that like button. It helps out a lot. Bomat Courier is one mana for a 1-1 artifact creature construct with haste. Whenever it attacks, exile the top card of your library face down. You can pay one red, discard your hand, and sacrifice the courier to put all cards exiled with it into their owner's hands. You want to talk about an interesting card design? This is an interesting card design. Genius way to incorporate pseudo drawing cards. The idea is that you drop this early, exile a few cards, then when you run out of gas, you sacrifice the courier to refuel via your exile zone. Here's the problem. If you don't get this card turn one, it's going to be super dead. Sure, you can play it whenever, get the attack trigger, then sacrifice it, but that's a lot of work. Most of this card's value is going to exist in the first few turns of the game. I actually like the card, it's a great design concept, I'm just a bit worried about playability. Scraphead Scrounger is 2 mana for a 3-2 artifact creature construct that can't block. You can pay one of anything in one black and exile another creature card from your graveyard to return the Scrounger from your graveyard to the battlefield. As soon as I saw this card, I thought of Despoiler of Souls. Then I thought about how much better this card is than that card. Of course, artifact removal is a thing, but still, this is generally better. We're seeing more 2 mana 3 twos, right? Just seems like they're around. Anyways, the card's hysterical with Eternal Scourge. Just exile the Scourge to bring the Scrounger back, play the Scourge, that's good stuff. Add in a prized amalgam, and you really have a trio of creatures that are going to be nearly impossible to keep down. It's like cards like this and Eternal Scourge can just be plopped into a zombie deck. I'm interested to see if the Scrounger will see constructed play, but if it does, I really want to see Eternal Scourge next to it. Authority of the Console is one white mana for an enchantment. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. Well, hello there, new commander staple. Blind obedience is great, and you just gain life instead of having to pay for it. Very cool. I can see this card in a ton of enchantment-based pillow fort decks, life gain strategies, the works. Great card for commander. We're looking at Isle Eternal Pilgrim, Karlov would be sweet, Aloro. These are great life gain commanders. For other types of strategies, Daxo should love this card, Grand Arbiter Augustine is a huge annoyance that might like this, and Queen Marchesa is perfect for this. Creatures entering the battlefield tapped helps you to regain your monarchy. Just a thought. Padim Council of Innovation is 4 mana for a 1-4 legendary creature of a Dalkin Artificer. Artifacts you control have hexproof. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest converted mana cost, or tied for the highest converted mana cost, draw a card. Now this is cool. Sure it isn't blue-red, but we can get past that considering how blue the card really is. Think about it. It gives hexproof to artifacts, and if you control the most expensive artifact, you get to draw a card. No part of that is red. This is super blue, all the blue. As far as playability is concerned, in any format you're in, there's opportunity to just Get a card with any artifact if your opponent simply doesn't play artifacts. If we're talking commander, where this card obviously belongs, there's a lot going on here. Let me explain. Padim provides hexproof for all of your artifacts. We really need to wrap our heads around how powerful that is. Think decks with Arkham Daxon, Sidri, Memnarch. There is a long list of artifact-based commanders. It really is. Even putting this in a Voltron strategy is just busted. You'll be drawing cards more often than not thanks to the very generous second ability. But more than that, hexproof for artifacts really hoses a lot of disruption. It may not seem flashy, but this provides an extra layer of protection for a card type that is pathetically easy to destroy. Artifacts are not that durable most of the time. Padim does a lot to ensure their survival. Also, that flavor text impressed me. Jeez, this is like my childhood all over again. Oh. Hmm. Aetherborn Marauder is 4 mana for a 2 2 Aetherborn Rogue with Flying and Lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, move any number of plus one plus one counters from other permanents you control onto Aetherborn Marauder. Quote, I don't know what that is or who it belongs to, but it's shiny and I want it. Wow, this Marauder is basically my spirit animal. Great flavor text, easily some of the best in this set. I believe it's meant mainly for limited play, but man, the Marauder is cool. 
Anything with flying and lifelink is something I pay attention to. This one's no different. Definitely going to be a high pick in limited for sure. Not even considering the second ability on it, which has a lot of value considering Fabricate is absolutely a thing in this set. It's an interesting card. Inventor's Apprentice is one red mana for a 1-2 human artificer. It gets plus one plus one as long as you control an artifact. I did not expect a card like this in the set, but I'm pleased that it's here. Obviously meant to be played in an artifact-based deck, a potential 2-3 attacking on turn 2 is definitely something to be happy about. This is no Monastery Swift Spear, but there is still value here. Something like this, if it does see standard constructed play, will most likely fit into some kind of red-white artifact aggro deck of some sort. Man, we really need some equipment here. Like, no joke, we really need it. Gotta step up our Gremlin game. Ruinous Gremlin is one red mana for a 1-1 Gremlin. You can pay 3 and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact. It's an amazing common for limited. I know what you're thinking. It's just a 1-1 one, one for 1 with an expensive ability. Shut up. We're talking about an artifact set. This might as well be a removal spell, especially for uncrewed vehicles. It's especially interesting. Make no mistake, Ruinous Gremlin is certainly better than a sideboard card in this upcoming limited format. The card's bonkers, much better than you think, and great for a common. I love it. Salivating Gremlins is 3 mana for a 2-3 Gremlin. When an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, the Gremlins gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains Trample until end of turn. As many others have already pointed out, the card reminds me of Brazen Wolves in a big way. Sure, it gets triggered by artifacts entering the battlefield and not attacking, but the stats line up pretty well and gaining Trample certainly matters. If you can get multiple artifacts to enter in one turn, it's a 6-3 with Trample for 3 mana. Seems great for attacking. Even if you trade with something, Trample is going to be impactful. For being commons, these gremlins are quite effective and should see limited play just fine. I'm impressed. Dovin Bane is two of anything, one white and one blue for a three loyalty planeswalker. You can plus one and until your next turn, up to one target creature gets minus three minus zero and its activated abilities can't be activated. You can also minus one and you gain two life and draw a card. Lastly, you can minus 7, and you get an emblem with. Your opponents can untap more than two permanents during their untap steps. I always love blue-white planeswalkers. The more the better. The plus one, while being something we've seen a few times now, is incredibly effective. Giving minus three to something is really going to damper their attacks, a form of pseudo-protection which most walkers need to be decent. Also, losing all activated abilities is nice. This is really going to hose a lot of creatures. Plus, fun fact, this stops most creatures from being able to crew vehicles. It doesn't stop the vehicles themselves, but if there aren't any drivers, then what? I do like that. The minus one is definitely something I can get behind. Gaining two life and drawing a card are both great, especially drawing a card, and it's only a minus one, which I'm assuming is why he only starts at three loyalty. That is painfully low for a four mana planeswalker, but the middle ability is only a minus one, so there's give and take there. This is your best ability by far, so I'm sure you'll be spamming it as much as I do. Lastly, the minus seven is straight up static orb. Static orb on an ultimate seems hilarious. Of course, I'd rather minus one a billion times, but hey, Static Orb, the friend no one wants. Sounds great. As far as general playability is concerned, I do like Dovin, but I'm still a bit worried about his loyalty. It is fairly low for a two-color walker on four mana. We'll see how it plays out, but clearly this is meant to be a more control-centric walker. I'm a fan. Whirler Virtuoso is one of anything, one blue and one red for a 2-3 Vidalcan Artificer. When it enters the battlefield, you get three energy counters. You can also pay three energy to create a 1-1 colorless thopter token with flying. Holy crap, this thing's awesome. This is exactly the kind of is it card I want out of the set. Three mana, two, three is fine. You get three energy on entry to the battlefield. That's amazing, especially if you can flicker it. And you don't even need to tap to create a thopter. So at worst, this is three mana for a 2-3 and a 1-1 flyer. That's very good, especially in a format like Limited. This card is going to be a great payoff for anyone in these colors for sure. It's very nice. We also got to see the rest of the new exclusive cards in the Planeswalker decks releasing soon. Liberating Combustion is 5 mana for a sorcery. It deals 6 damage to target creature. You may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Chandra Pyrogenius, reveal it, and put it into your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Not gonna lie, this is a great idea. Think about it, especially for newer players. I'm sure they're gonna wanna play with the walkers, right? 
giving them the ability to not only search for Chandra, but also bring Chandra back from the graveyard is amazing, and you get to incinerate a creature to boot. It's a genius concept, exactly what I'd want for casual play. Of course, if Chandra gets a tutor, then Nyssa better get one too, right? Not to fear, she totally has one. Verding Crescendo is four mana for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Search your library and graveyard for a card named Nissa Nature's Artisan, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. I love these! I love them! Verdant Crescendo is really neat! The Crescendo gets you one mana away from actually playing Nissa, which is really nice. Again, totally support these Walker-specific tutors. I think it makes playing these decks a lot more fun, especially casually. I like it. In these Planeswalker decks, there are also cards that benefit from controlling each Planeswalker. Renegade Firebrand is 3 mana for a 3-2 Human Warrior. As long as you control a Chandra Planeswalker, the Firebrand gets plus 1 plus 1 as First Strike. Alright, this is sweet! Notice, it says Chandra Planeswalker, which means it can be any Chandra, not just the Pyro Genius. I can get behind that. This becoming a 4-2 with First Strike for 3 mana is quite strong, it's nice. Guardian of the Great Conduit is 4 mana for a 2-4 Elemental with Reach. As long as you control a Nissa Planeswalker, the Guardian gets plus 2 plus 0 and has Vigilance. Talk about a wall. Notice again, you can control any Nissa Planeswalker. But as long as you do, this is a 4 mana 4-4 four four with Vigilance and Reach. That's pretty hefty. Really start to get behind these Planeswalker decks. They seem sincerely fun for casual and especially newer players. And with all that said, we end another day of previews. We saw a lot today, and I think the set's really taking shape now. How do you feel about Dovin Bane? I'm really interested to hear where you think his power level is. The card is certainly useful, and the abilities are interesting, so please let me know what you think. As always, be sure to subscribe for the latest and most reliable Kaladesh spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Kaladesh booster boxes have been fluctuating in price lately, but it looks like we're settling around $94 right now. Pretty decent price considering all the craziness that is the set. If your local LGS is pricing the set too high or you don't have a local LGS, TCG Player is convenient with fair pricing. Can't really go wrong there. Click the links, enjoy your boxes. Everyone wins. Yay!